Welcome to Reflect on This. Hello, I am Johnny Henshaw. This is the podcast version of devotionals I send to my family and friends. In these devotionals, I share the things I'm learning about the ways and nature of God through applying my study of the scriptures to the world around me. And don't forget to keep listening at the conclusion of today's episode to hear about my recommended resources, such as podcasts that I find helpful and encouraging, books that inspired some of these episodes, and ministries that I want you to know about. So let's get started. Please join me today as we reflect on this. I recently read the following from a Wall Street Journal article that was explaining how the airline industry has dramatically improved the safety of air travel. Airlines produce fewer deaths per mile than cars, ferries, trains, subways, or buses, and the chances of dying in a crash are roughly the same as getting struck by lightning while reading this sentence. This revolution in the sky that has saved countless lives began nearly three decades ago with a surprisingly innovative strategy for improving air safety. It depended on pilots, flight attendants, and dispatchers voluntarily reporting safety issues and admitting their own errors. The old system explained accidents after they happened. This new system was designed to prevent those accidents from ever happening. It relied on everybody doing something that nobody wants to do, voluntarily admitting when they get things wrong. It worked. The Federal Aviation Administration's self-reporting programs that encourage airline operators to come forward without fear of retribution helped slash the rate of fatal accidents on U.S. airlines by such large percentages that the industry had to figure out new ways to measure safety. This unprecedented stretch of nearly 15 years without a deadly crash made the existing stats essentially useless. This story reminded me of a foundational biblical principle. There is great value in speaking the truth. It is one of the marks of a follower of Jesus. Psalm 15, verses 1 through 2 says, O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? He who walks with integrity and works righteousness and speaks truth in his heart. There is also a companion biblical principle here. We are to readily admit when we have made a mistake. When I remember the following, it helps me to admit my mistakes. Number one, God does not condemn me for my mistakes. Romans 8, 1 says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Number two, as humans, we all make mistakes. James 3, 2 says, For we all often stumble and fall and offend in many ways. And number three, when I fail, I am to remember that I am God's son and then get up. Proverbs 24.16 says, Though a righteous man falls seven times, he will get up, but the wicked will stumble into ruin. The airline industry found that applying this biblical principle of encouraging truthful reporting of mistakes brought dramatic benefits, even though it was not explicitly acknowledged as a biblical principle. In fact, this is but one example of how biblical principles, even when applied by unbelievers, will prove to be true, right, and beneficial. John C. Maxwell says, A man must be big enough to admit his mistakes, smart enough to profit from them, and strong enough to correct them. As believers, we have additional motivations to speak truthfully and admit our mistakes. Ephesians 4.25 says, Therefore, laying aside falsehood, speak truth with each one of you, with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Because believers are members of one another, we benefit from mutual integrity of our speech. 
Ephesians 4.15 says, But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. This reminds me that speaking truthfully fosters spiritual growth. 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This reminds me that if we admit our mistakes, we will receive forgiveness. James 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. And this reminds me that if we confess our mistakes, we receive emotional, spiritual, and even physical healing. These verses challenge me to renew my commitment to integrity and truthfulness in all I do and to readily admit when I have made a mistake. Will you join me in this challenge? Today, I encourage you to reflect on this. Today's featured resource is the Bible Study software package entitled eSword. This free Bible study software is available for download to a wide range of computers and mobile devices, including Windows and Mac computers and Apple and Android tablets and phones. The download includes several free public domain resources, including Bibles, dictionaries, commentaries, devotionals, and maps. You can then download from within the eSword program many more free public domain resources. You can optionally purchase whatever copyrighted resources you want to create a powerful study library. One of the greatest benefits of Bible study with this software is the multi-windowed display so that you can simultaneously have windows open to a Bible translation, a dictionary, and a commentary. They are automatically linked so that if you select a verse, then the corresponding entry in the selected dictionary and commentary are displayed. You can also easily compare Bible translations by viewing them in parallel windows. For the Bible translations that have embedded Strong's numbers, referencing the corresponding Hebrew or Greek word, you can hover over a Strong's number and a tooltip pops up with the Strong's definition for that word. To learn more and to get a free download of this amazing study tool, on your computer, go to esword.net. That's e-sword.net. On your mobile device, go to your app store and search for esword. That's e-sword.